Good afternoon, everybody. Well, we have just got back from the Dapnet field days uh, yesterday, actually. And this morning I did a little bit of plowing and I'm going to continue plowing today. And But at, I want to show you at the end of this video some more footage that, from the Dapnet field days and even talk a, a little bit about that even now. Um, we had a great time and the field days was held in Loudoun, New Hampshire. And this is something that happens every year. They have a field days. and Next year, it's going to be in at Shelburne Farms in Shelburne, Vermont. So it jumps around as they do these field days. Um, I have not been a big part of these field days, but uh, maybe uh, I might even help more this coming year. Um, I might might even take my horses to the field days um, in Shelburne Farms. Um, so. Uh, but we had a great time this past weekend at the field days. Um, there was um, on there was a Friday, Saturday, Sunday event, and on s Friday um, there was intensive classes. The intensive classes that they had were there were three different classes that you could have chose to be in, and the intensive classes cost. There's a there's a fee. Um, it's a very um, small fee, I think. But um, it was on horse logging, one, and there was one just on general kind of beginning horse, uh, horses, uh, hitching up and driving horses, and then one more on crop work and, and vegetable type of farming. So I was down with the, so I was down with the logging class all day on Friday, and Brenda was jumping all over the place getting videos of what was going on that, that day. And then on Saturday, it was more of an open type of thing for anybody to come. And it, there again, it still did cost money. And my first video I put out on DAPNET, uh, last time I put a video, um, that was just uh, little bits and pieces. And, and that's all I'm gonna show this, on this video also, because we, we want to just get you excited and thinking that maybe you'd like to come to the field days next year. And so that's what we're going to try and show, just little bits and pieces. And I do apologize as I have made these videos. i hoping to get a lot of different people that were there in on the videos and I might have missed some. So I apologize for that. We're not going to spend a lot of time here on this video with the plowing the corn ground under and if you've been watching my videos you'll know that we actually did not harvest it in the conventional way we actually let the cattle out into it and they harvested it themselves for people that are new to my channel on this plow right today this is a two-way white horse plow and we have um, buck and can they're the two black pertrons and then we have lady she is in the furrow right now and she is a belgian that is Pregnant. We got her pregnant with our Suffolk stallion this summer, so she will have a colt hopefully in uh, May of next year. So this is a two-way plow, meaning you use one plow and plow one side of the field, and then you come right back to the same furrow, swap plows, and use the other plow on your way back through. And I'll show you what I mean when we get to the end of the field here. And then we'll go on to more pictures and more clips of the field days. Am I missing anything, Brenda? So I personally had a super time at the field days. Jeek. Um, Jeek. The thing that I enjoyed most was the Jeek. getting to know people. Careful. Um, people with Jeep. similar interests Jeep. Jeep. and Jeep. there's just a Jeep. lot of really Jeep. nice people out there oh. and <laughs> people who really want to work with the land and work close to the land people Jeep. who Jeep. Jeep. want to Cuff. work with horses or oxen or um, dogs just using unconventional <laughs> ways to uh, do whatever it is they want to do whether it be being in the woods or being in the up. field. And there's a lot of cool people out there with a lot of cool ideas. Oh. And oh. I was very pleased to meet them. <clears throat> and they were from a 
I was surprised how wide of a area they came from. And the hope is that this draft animal powered network will maybe, you know, spread out and um, move to other areas, make it easier for other people to come that are um, from further away because people who are close to the land and have animals can't be gone for too long. This was a long trip for us. And uh, I'm really glad we went, but this was, we, we took an extra day and went to the coast and that was beautiful. Weren't there very long, but I got my ocean fixed, so I was very happy for that. It's really, really good to be home. And while we were gone, we had a really hard frost, so things are different now. Our 2023 calendars are available. You can check in the description below. And if you purchase one of those, you could mark off the first weekend in October of 2023 for the next DAPNET field, field days, which once again is gonna be in Shelburne, Vermont. Ha. Ha. Yep. Ha. So let's go now to some of the footage we had from this weekend's field days. So we had a lovely lunch break and now we are headed down to the woods for the logging section of what's going on here at the farm this weekend. This was um, going on this morning and Jim got a little bit of footage of that, but I'm gonna go along and see what's going on down there myself this afternoon. Heading down to the place where the logging will take place. So here comes Derek and Brad with their team of nice Belgians that they have and we used them this morning and we'll continue to use them this afternoon. And here's Tyler with his pair of oxen. These oxen belong to Sanborn Mills Farm which is the host of where we're at today. guys cut much oak? Very little actually. I don't think this calendar year I've cut one except for at the marsh building with Rockefeller. We had one that, one big old oak they had one. So hardly ever. The only place I used to see it regularly, I used to have a client up in Grand Isles and all, up by the lake. And she had a lot of them. So Derek here is pulled that one little piece of firewood out. And now he's backing kind of into the brush and he's going to grab another piece of firewood to pull up and I'm quite sure he'll take both of them out at the same time. His horses were feeling pretty good and they're a nice stout pair of Belgians and he was kind of complaining saying, can't you get me some bigger hitches so I could pull out to get these horses a little bit tired instead of pulling this small stuff? And I agreed with him 100%. He told, me that, he told me to cut the hardwood, but I don't think I'm going to. I, I need something up. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to. No, I don't want to. But it'd be a nice. I mean, it's the finest problem. What we're going to talk about right now is what tree to cut out of the blue paint next um, so that we can access it with horses easier and limit our cleanup. Earlier, someone asked, you know, what what height do you cut your slash at? And again, that's more of a silvicultural thing. Uh, in a lot of places, in, in my woodlots, we leave slash tall uh, and use it with intention when we can. But some places, it, from an aesthetic standpoint, some of the landowners really don't want huge slash piles near the trails. So if we're gonna harvest there, then we cut it down below knee height. 
and each state has different rules and regs and best management practices too. Most all the presenters were from the New England area in New York, um, but we did have one guy from North Carolina, and here he is talking now. What's, what's typical up here for like what diameter do y'all go down to in terms of, you say you don't pull pulp anymore, I mean, it's down to like 10 inches, 8 inches? Or yeah, 8 for softwood, 9 for hardwood, and okay. down to 5 for pulp if you can if find you can a place to send it. Yeah. So there was a lot of conversation about how where, and, where to put trees down and how to do it in such a way that you can get to it the best with the horses or the cattle. Um, so if a tree has uh, definite lean, then you have to work within the boundaries of that lean. Um, so as far as whether or not you like it to be in line with your trail or across the trail, um, some of that, a lot of that to me is dictated by the lean. Now, Of course, we talked about safety quite a bit during that day. Not only right above you, like the closest I've ever come to, you know, being taken out was by a dead ash tree 40 feet away from the trunk I was cutting. Right. You know, it brushed past it when it was falling down. The tree shook three times. And on the way back, the whole top broke off. The tree hit the ground. I was like, all right, tree hit your ground. Nothing fell, I'm good. I turned around and that top 50 feet, 60 feet up broke off on the third sway and came right back, clipped my helmet, broke my saw out of my hand, hit me in the knee. Yeah. You know, eight inch diameter yep. like that. Even though, like I said, I watched it hit the ground, looked up, nothing broke off. Yeah, and I was probably 20 feet behind the trunk of the tree I cut. Yeah. Let's come check out the stump. Talk about the hinge. You can talk about that, John. Yeah. So John did a great job of putting this tree down, and now he's explaining to us the importance of proper cutting, and he actually went right through and showed how he did it, and he did a great job with that also. Here we are with Jared's one horse cart that he made himself and it looks like quite a very nice unit that would work great. John is driving his horse on that cart and hitching onto a log to show us how that works. And here Tyler is pulling a top log out of the brush to take out the landing. So now we head out of the woods and go up to the barn. So this is Nick Hammond, and Hammond, and Hammond, yeah. he he is working at Sterling College, and I'm I'm gonna let you. Yeah, so talk about it. Um, so I work at Sterling College, which is up in Craftsbury, Vermont, kind of northeast kingdom in uh, Vermont, way not too far from the border of Canada. Um, but we have it's a really small school, and my main uh, job title is I'm the draft animal educator and manager. And I teach uh, all the different draft classes. There's kind of a one, two, and three level of the course. Uh, and then I teach a farrier science class. Um, and then if you accomplish all those, including the farrier science, uh, you can actually uh, get a draft animal minor. Um, and so that's my main goal on top of just managing the animals. And I do help out on the farm. We have kind of a small diversified farm, uh, mostly grazing animals. and. We have uh, a few meat birds that we pretty much all of our food goes into the kitchen um, that we, you know, the on campus kitchen. Uh, and I do have a small role in that, um, but mostly with the animals. And uh, yeah, that's my, my main gig. Brandon was up here yesterday, but I haven't been up here yet. Hey, first, please don't walk around like that. So we're getting a ride up to the other site. and. We have lot, the next generation is riding along here. And wh one thing we learned this weekend is how important it is for um, the, to, to pass this on to the next generation. Yep. Uh, by the way, this is Saturday. This is the second day of the, of the workshop and the, the field days. 
it's nice to see the variety here this weekend of different kinds of horses. Hey guys. Smile. <sighs> and here are the meters. They're given rides and they were one of the sponsors for the whole, whole event. So thank you, meters. Lots of activity here on the on the farm end of things. We've got quite a few teams of oxen. Bring straight out to me. Gather your line. Yeah. And here's a young man trying his hand at driving horses. And here's another great pair of Belgians. Did some great work on the spring tooth. Hi everybody. So here we are on the last day of the Dapnet Field Days. And uh, we're gonna be showing a few different things. So here we have a lady that's actually talking about um, oxen and starting oxen. So here we have a young pair of calves that uh, these guys are going to start the first few lessons on them as far as training to be oxen. So now Tyler's working on his other set of ox, other pair of oxen and they're a little bit older and he's still training them, and as you can see, without the yoke yet. So the last thing I want to show you on this video is the water-powered sawmill that we were able to watch and actually see working and operating. And this is all at Sanborn Mills Farm, and uh, I do want to take this time to thank Sanborn Mills Farm for allowing this to be here on their property and their farm. And uh, there's so many people that should be thanked, I'm sure, and I'm not even going to attempt to do it because I'm sure I'll miss some. So um, I do want to thank everybody that was involved. It was a great weekend. Okay, so here we are with Logan down in the sawmill, and he's going to explain a few things as to how this operates. Well, basically, we roll the log in to there, roll it onto our front block and our tail block, and we get it set to where we want to make our first cut, and we run through it, get our board, and use So, just for people who have no idea what we're talking about, that is the saw, and that goes yep. up and down? Yep. And they call it an up and down saw because it goes up and down. They call that a circular saw because it's circular. So, you actually have the ability to do either or either or yeah and that's what's unique about this mill is because we have the option to do either or and they're both water powered okay does it take i know right now you said you shut down because you letting the water pressure or water build up to have more yep. pressure type of thing and uh does one of these take more power than the other one this one takes probably 30 percent more water this one we can fill up the pond and get quite a few cuts but that one if we didn't have the water continuously flowing into the pond above then it we wouldn't be able to, we'd only be able to make like two cuts okay and be out of water oh wow wow <clears throat> but this one here you can you can actually make quite a few cuts yep and this you should be can... able to even now as we build up more water right once we once the pond's filled up we can make probably five cuts before we okay. have to but still not a lot still yeah
Well, we sure had a good weekend, didn't we? Yeah, we did. I hope uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed um, getting a kind of a glimpse of what goes on at the Dot Nat Field Days, and we'd like to actually um, invite you all to even um, plan on next year coming. And next year it will be in Shelburne Farms in Northern Vermont, and. Uh, it will be the same kind of a plan as this one. There'll be it's a three-day event. On Friday there'll be intensives, and then on Saturday there'll be just kind of more of an open house type of a, a day, and then Sunday just the finishing up. It'll be the first weekend in October next year. Yes. And I think one of the best things that came out of the weekend was relationships and being able just to talk face to face with people and talk about um, the good things, the bad things, learn things, um, just their experiences it was really re it's really invaluable i think yep yep so. and it's a small community so we all need each other you know to yeah. learn and grow so i hope you enjoyed the videos you have a great day